Good morning YouTube and once again it's not riding with mower. Once again the weather's battered us. Um, this weren't like last January. Last January I clearly remember going out more. I've been out more last January than I've been out for the last two months. Uh, what date is it? In a second. Sunday the 12th of January. And we're still being battered with this uh, not so good weather. I don't know where it is down south, and I don't know how it is up north, but round here in Lancashire, uh, border of Yorkshire, it's atrocious. Rain, rain, and more rain. And when it's not raining, they're gritting. I don't want to sound depressive. Oh, obviously, got a text. I don't want to sound depressive at all. Uh, <laughs> the text I've just received is off, it's off one of the vloggers, James. <laughs> and I think Adam's, I think he's just seen Adam's text. Adam was on uh, with uh, Natrin last night, a couple of texts, and uh, it's something to show everybody. I'm not going to say nothing. Um, Adam, no doubt, will be along at some stage and putting a vlog up. And James has just uh, jumped in. That's the three of us who went out. James, Adam and Steve. Yeah, so a tea, brew a tea first, that's first job. Run with that. So, what are we doing today? Well, we're not going riding, are we? That's for certain. So I thought I'd do the uh, phaser brakes. The front and back. I've already done one side, then we can concentrate on the side where the front brake and the back brake is, and we're not. Obviously, the, the two front brakes are identical, and there's no point um, showing you both of them. When I do the garage maintenance bit, I try to make it as easy and as tolerable as possible because not all of us are competent in the garage and uh, the few young guns or older guns who's just getting into it may not know what to do I know the seasoned bikers do and we can rip the brakes apart and stick them back together again bleed the brakes change the cape brake you know you can do most things I know that but this is just I do I do it as basic as I can so the guys who who are not so competent can uh, can follow it easier. So the tools we're using today, that's why I'm, I'm I'm letting you know before we start. Then anybody who wants to do the phaser front and back will know uh, what tools you'll need. This is a new one I've just picked up off Nev in Australia. He recommended getting um, a brake piston uh, pliers, and these are them. Obviously, put the pressure on instead of bringing the pliers together it pushes them apart and that piece then goes into the piston tight and you can turn the piston easily unless obviously it's um, seized or stuck incidentally I have a tip to get a seized piston out if you're ever struggling give us a shout and I'll let you know I might even show it you one day and put it on the video and then you just press the two you know, you see the two the two wide bits here and here I'll open it up again that's it that's to its extent it's quite big um, but to open to release you just press on them too I will say this when you first get it pressing on them is very hard it's it's it needs um, a bit of wear to, to, to get the the newness off the stiffness so that's for turning the pistons and that will all become clear in the, in the uh, garage of love when we get in there. What else? This bit of kit I showed you on the, um, on the 250 but on the phaser, front brakes, I'll also do the back with it, but on the front brakes it really comes into its own and that will be shown on the video how much this helps you on the front brake, you know, when you double pistons. 
That's the uh, it pushes the pistons apart. I'll show you anyway when we get in there. You'll need a quality screwdriver. I'm not saying this is quality, but it's an old one of mine. It's a CK Chrome Vanadium made in Germany with no damage to that point whatsoever. That'll become clear in the garage. But you need a good good one of them on the phaser, not all the bikes, well maybe you do, but on the phaser you really do need a good screwdriver. I'll show you why. Long nose pliers and they're handy for getting the um, clips out of the brakes. The two, uh, the two clips that hold the, the spindle in, that hold the brake pads in. Again, I'll show you. You need a 5mm Allen key. I'm using mine off my, uh, on with the ratchet. Because there is, you do need a bit of power in this. I'm using the ratchet type. You can get it off with others, but you know, you, you've got to be careful for rounding the end off. This is a good quality. Short extension. That stops you smashing your knuckles onto to brake discs, on the front brake disc. And the 12mm socket, I think it's 12. 12mm socket. And of course, the magnetic dish. Two big magnetics on this one, but uh, you need the magnetic disc to put the bits in. And in my case, a pair of specs and a pot of tea. At this point, uh, I was on to another subscriber last night and I've subscribed to his channel. It's Stephen Roberts. Uh, he's new to the game, he's put one video up. Uh, he's going to start, he's going to uh, get cracking. He's from down south, the warmer climates. Uh, hopefully it's warm down there. And I think uh, he's going to give us a ring today and we'll have a bit of a natter about the phaser. And he was asking, do I put a, a camera mounted? A camera mounted? A camera mounted? Do I, no. Do I mount a camera on the phaser bike itself or on the helmet? And the answer is, on the helmet soon. I haven't put one on the bike as yet. I do believe, on the helmet, as opposed to a fixed camera mount, you have perif peripheral vision, meaning if you see something and you want to talk about it, the camera picks it up. If it's fixed on the bike and you're nattering about something over there, or over there for whatever matter, you're not going to get it. Whereas a camera mounted one is continually um, panning with your head, obviously, and uh, anything you're talking about, usually you pick it up, obviously, the cameras as we've spoke about already, on the helmet have their limitations so if you're showing a hawk in the air or something like that or a plane it ain't gonna happen St similar thing to in scotland uh, i saw a pine martin and i got a couple of comments saying are you sure you saw the pine martin <laughs> yes <laughs> the answer is 100 percent certain it dived into the uh, shrubbery to the right if you watch the car in front of me it was a good few yards in front. He also saw it, and it's at the moment he hit the brake lights to look at it, and that's when it jabbed into the uh, the shoe brake at the side, and that indicates that guy in front with the car driving a per along a perfectly normal road wouldn't dab his brakes, <laughs> and he dabbed the brakes exactly at the moment the um, Pine Martin was diving into the side. In fact, he was one of the highlights of the Scotland trip with that, although the scenery blew me away. But I really enjoyed seeing that. Anyway, enough waffling. We're going to, I'll, oh, and don't forget your brew. We're going to the garage and, uh, yeah, we'll uh, press on. Adios, YouTube. Back in a second. Okay, guys, we're in the garage. As you can see. And this is a phrase, phaser's uh, front brake. As you can see, there's a clip on the back plate. Always pay particular notice with that the uh, bendy bit, as I like to call it, is at the top. There's none at the bottom. That's when you come to get put it back on. Um, <clears throat> be a lot easier if you remember that. Then you know which way it's going. 
I'm going to stick a couple of gloves on. And also have with you a cloth, your brake cleaner, and some grease. A bit of grease. And tie up to if you put brake, uh, grease on your rain brakes, don't forget, grease and brakes don't go well together. Okay, so first job, obviously, is to take the uh, brake caliper off. Now, I'll just show you what I meant with the short extension. If you're on with a, just a socket there, you have a chance of catching your back of your hand on the brake itself, so that's why I put a short extension on there, you, you don't smash your knuckles. All these little tips <laughs> come with years of experience and pain. <laughs> Oops. What a pill it. Okay, you cheap. There's two bolts to take out. I've just been a pillock because I've just undone the brake fluid. No arm done because no air's got in. I could take it out and you wouldn't see that. You'd be none the wiser. And I wouldn't look a complete dick. <laughs> but, for the benefit of the novices, I include myself in them, and anybody who's never done this job before, bear that one in mind. That will be nattering and not watching what I was doing at the time. So I'm going to leave it in and look a complete dick. Just for the benefit, so nobody else does the same. Never done that before. Probably never ever do it again. Stupid mistake. Easily done. It'll wash off. It, it, I can wash it off with the uh, brake fluid cleaner. Terrible stuff is brake fluid. Terrible, terrible stuff. That's why I put the cloth under the wheel now. Under onto the paint. It'll strip paint in no time. And plastic melts it. Okay. Once you've run the two bolts, I pull the brake off away from the bolt uh, where the the bolts go through, and I twist the brake on the disc itself. And what that does, it pushes the pistons back and makes it easier for you to get the uh, caliper off without banging your paintwork. At this point, due to the small amount of um, release of fluid, I'm going to just wash it off. And it's done with. It's not going to do any damage to anything then. Okay, YouTube. The next bit, what I normally do, if you push the, the, the pin through enough, you can get hold of it at this, this end and just twist it round. And you'll see the little clips come round that hold this, this pin in to the caliper. See them coming round now. And then you can get, actually get hold of it and turn it round with the uh, pin itself. As I've said in previous videos, I do this a couple of times a year. So mine are never in bad, bad health really, for want of a better word. But if you didn't do this regular, you know, you could be all clagged up. So the next bit is just pull that out. And put it in your tray. Pull the other one out and put it in the tray. Your next bit is your clip. Just remove the clip. Oh, sorry, the pin. The pin that holds the clip in. Push that out from this side. And if it's clean, and you know, I, as I say, I regularly take mine out, I never have a problem pulling that out, but it can be difficult if you don't keep on top of them and they get a bit of clag in there. Then you can take that clip off and the brake pads will fall out. Two pads. Uh, I've got a bit of, uh, I'll put a bit of brake cleaner on them. Don't know how much the uh, 
gratefully we got down there, if, it, if, if, if any at all, but uh, yeah, I'll just give them a quick wipe and they're all right. No problems with them. Check for wear down that groove. You see the groove there? There's plenty of meat on them. You ain't got to bother. There's no scoring. Which means the brake pads are in good condition and the discs are in good condition. There's no uneven wear. So all pistons are working correctly as they should be at the moment. But there's no harm in giving them a quick clean and getting them freed up. Which is what we do next. Right, so what I'm going to do next, uh, YouTube, I'm going to pull the ham, uh, the, the ham brake. I'm going to pull the brake on, the front brake, and you'll see them pistons come out. Be very, very careful when you do this that the pistons don't come too far out and shoot out. As I said on the 250, you'll have problems, big problems, pain in the arse putting them in. So I'll put it in that position, and you can see, and the pistons should. You'll get some pistons coming out before others, but on the, on, in general, they should all come out together, ish. There's one at the bottom there not coming out as fast as the other, so if you hold the other three in, that'll catch up. And there they are, all four pistons, clear as a bell. I can see where the skank is on the edge, where they've been out to. So what we'll do next, we'll spray the brake cleaner on them and clean all them pistons off. Just get a gent nice gentle, oh, this is an old t-shirt, just wipes the uh, crap off the edges. And same on the reverse side. I'm twisting it around, I wouldn't normally do this YouTube. It's just for the purpose of the, uh, the film. And when you've got that off there, this is where the next bit the uh, piston players come into their own. You get your piston players with, the, with that end, the grip, and I'll try and get this in best I can. Maybe it's better from reverse. Uh, it's going to be slightly awkward from this because I'm doing it upside down. But you put the uh, into the uh, piston, spread the calipers, and turn. And that turns the piston round. I don't know if you can see that, but it's turning the piston completely round. Just have to re uh... As I say, I'm doing this back to front, so it's a bit difficult for me. But that's turning the, the piston round. I'll do the top one, then it's easier for you to see. Again, in it goes, open them up and twist, and, and the, the piston spins around. I'm sure you're getting the uh, general idea now, YouTube. So, I'm going to uh, just come off the video a minute. I'm just going to stop the video whilst I uh, spin all four around, give them a clean, and then I'll be back. Okie cokie YouTube, welcome back. <coughs> uh, what I did, I left uh, the brake caliper to dry itself off for about a good 10-15 minutes. Uh, and as you can see, it's, the pistons are clean now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to push the pistons out a slightly bit further. Bearing in mind what I said, you've got to be really careful. You push them babies out too far, you're in trouble. Once I've got them out so far, this is where the bit of kit comes in now. That's the, cali uh, the piston, uh, pushes the pistons back. So it need, on this occasion I pushed them out that far, it does need to go right back to the stop. And that's where it is now. Oh, one thing before we do that, YouTube, must remember. Give us a second.
great fluid cleaner on. Again, as I said before, the brake fluid cleaner isn't very good with the seals. It, uh, it can, I think, from what I've been told, I don't know how right it is, can rot the seals. Whereas obviously the brake fluid doesn't. Because it's back with it anyway. So once you've covered all the pistons with the brake fluid, on this occasion I'm going to have to push that one back just a tad. Every time you push it, push your hands in there now with the brake fluid in there, clean, wipe your hands on a rag. Right. You get the... Uh, it goes between the pistons there. Get it. I've just pushed that one out a bit too far. You just have to shove them back a tad. Right, let's push the other one out now. It'll go in now. He says. And there it's in. Once that's in there, YouTube, uh, obviously I'd, I wouldn't do it like this because I'm only doing it for the camera. I'm doing it back to front, so it's quite difficult for me because it wouldn't be like this. I'm just doing it so you can see. Then you open the uh, piston pusher open and it, what it does, it shoves the pistons back evenly, right back to stop. You'll see when I take it out. It's a brilliant bit of kit for cleaning uh, pistons and jamming up, uh, and freeing up uh, seized ones. There you go, look at that. Bottle pistons back, so I just give it a quick. Them three are coming, that one isn't there, there it goes. They're all running free. Yeah, all them pistons are running free now. So what I do then, I put the, to uh, the tool back in. And you can do it two or three times if you wish, but uh, the pistons are running free, I know they are. So again, just shove them right back in. I hope you get in this YouTube, how these tools work, and I think you are. It's a brilliant bit of kit. Use it loads soon I've had it. Pistons all the way back now. Let's wind that tool in. As you can see the pistons are all the way back now. So what I'll do then, I'll give it one last clean. Get any brake fluid off, any residue that's left on there and nothing will sink or go past the pistons so you know you're clear give it a quick wipe get any brake fluid off you know it's clear now clear of brake fluid clear of grease at the moment that is once you've got it clean like that you start to re rebuild Now, what I normally do now, I'll give the uh, clip a quick clean as well. You can have tarmac on, just general road crud. And don't forget what we said, the, the bendy bit to the top. It can be a bit fiddly this next bit, so I'll just... Best way of doing it is like that. Put the clip in, get the brake pads. Slide the babies in.
<laughs> we just come out of it there. Line everything up to as near as damn it. Oh, the clips come out. Right, well, it's all apart again. I'm just going to put it, put it. I'm just going to put a bit of copper grease on that pin. Normally, I do it with my fingers, but I've got my gloves on. But once you've done that, YouTube, don't forget you don't want grease on them brake pads at all. You don't want it anywhere near them. I would normally have put it on before I started, but I didn't. So I could have put it back and took it apart again, but I didn't want to do that, being lazy. You know, off, off camera. Right. Here we go. Clip in. Spin it over. Brake pads in. Get your pin carefully. See if you can line it all up. Sometimes it goes straight in, sometimes it's a faff. With him. Oh! <laughs> it hasn't gone through the clip. Make sure the clip's right. I'm being careful now because I'm, I'm mindful I might have some grease on me on my fingers okay now the clips out at the top the clips in Sometimes it goes right in, no, no bother, but this one's going to be a, a pain. So break. Don't bother about the... Uh, let's get one in first. Well, I'll show you what to do with brake pads after. Ah, the clip's in at the bottom. There we go. We're going through now. No, we're not. We missed it again. Oops. The other one went in like... I mean, it does every time. This is the first time I've had this problem. But stick with me. And I'll we'll sort it. The, bit, the, the clip is spinning as I'm putting it in. Come on. I'm also doing it back to front so you can see. Oh, trying to show you. <coughs> you know, I'd be, if I were do it, weren't doing this on the camera, I'd be the other way. I'd be where the camera is now. If you know what I mean. Come on, baby. What's the matter with you? I can't understand why it's not just sliding through. There's a problem somewhere. Right, we've got the clip in, we ate the pad, we want pad. So we'll just slide it out now. And put the other pad in. 
<laughs> right, YouTube. For the purpose of the video, I'm turning it off. I'll come back in a minute. You get the idea. It's all going cocked up. Well, I might not turn you off. I'll give, give us another go. See, that should just slide, slot in there and go onto them. There's like a slide at the top where it rests. And then one at the bottom. But for some unknown reason, it's not doing it. There you go. I've left it running. I was just trying to fool the. Uh... <laughs> right, once you've got that YouTube, upwards and onwards, get the players and just spin the pin round till you can see the, uh, the holes of the uh, clip where the clips fit in. The sir clips. I'll show you. As I say, I'm continuing doing this back to front, that's why it's looking more difficult than it is. It's not actually difficult, it's me because I'm back to front. It's like working with your uh, left hand when you're right handed. It's not good. Where's them bloody holes gone? Right, there now. Two holes there, get the clips. I usually just dab them in grease. As I said to you, keep grease well away from brakes, but that's what I do. You do exactly what you want, don't follow me. I'll wipe all that excess off after you get the. That clips him. Then you put a, the tiniest amount on, by the way. And the only reason why I do that, why you do this, is because don't forget these are really well into weather down there. That's that one in. Both eclipses are in now. Get your rag, give it a quick wipe across the back. Holds well, brakes are spread well apart. If them brake pads weren't wide apart, you can always get something, you know, like plastic, eh? Uh, just to spread them before you put it back onto the wheel. That's just a tip, is that? And then you just put your, uh, be careful how you're putting it back on because you can catch your paintwork on your, on your wheel. Then clearly your two bolts go in. Job done. Then what you do, you check your book, uh, you get your... Okay YouTube, uh, welcome back, we're now at the rear. Uh, don't forget to give us a bit of leeway because I'm working back to front. <laughs> you know, as I said, it's like working with your left hand when you're right handed. So here we go again. We're at the rear. Now I did mention the screw, uh, the screw, good quality screwdriver. Reason for this is you have to unscrew that. And if you can see that, it's where the pin sits that holds the brake in. And that's on a 5mm Allen key. This gives no end of trouble. Ask any Yamaha mechanic who deals with these time and time again anybody with a phaser of this year 
I think Steve Roberts, I think you've got one. Anybody with a phaser this year, with this type of system, that will give you some pain if you don't keep on top of it. I really cannot stress how much, for a little screw like that, a little grub screw, you have to look after it. <coughs> it jams in this barrel with a crap and crud. Imagine oak crud spinning around there and catching that day after day after day, maybe in the rain and the snow and the shit and the grit. That jams in. It's made of Spanish. It really does strip. And that's why you need a good quality un undamaged flat screwdriver. I have, I have slackened it off by the way. And that grub screw comes out. Now a tip here. Take it uh, or don't take it. What I do, I then re when I put it back together, I'm going to show you. I refill that all with copper grease right to the end when I put it back together. And I've had no bother then. You know, I just just loosen that off, <coughs> loosen the pin. It's it starts spinning. So it's spinning. That's okay. That's loose. So now we take the back brake off. Back brake caliper, should I say? And there's just two bolts again for this. Oh yeah, one's a a twelve mil. I forgot about that actually. I think to those fourteen. Okay, Come. I've completely forgot about that. Completely. So one's twelve, one's fourteen. Oh, baby. We're in tight. Mind you, as I say, you two, I'm working back to front. Again, lift them clear of the the fasteners and just spread them a bit. The uh, you see uh, the um, brake pads they'll, they'll uh, run free now. So what we do now we take the uh, the pin out. Screwing right out. Again, I'll put copper grease on mine. You do as you wish. It's only what I do. I know grease and brakes. I keep mentioning that. And the pads will drop out. Once you get the pads out, check. Oh, there's loads of meat on them. No scoring, no damage, that's what you like to see. So now we're on uh, with one piston there, see him come out, no bother, oh god, not my brake fluid over, hey ho. Really good squirt. 
and a complete white round. I wonder if them uh, if they'll open up wide enough for that uh, piston. Oh yeah. So that's even better to show you now, isn't it? That just turns that piston round really easy. So you can get all the way around it. Get a good clean out. Once you've done that YouTube, you can either shove it back in with your hands, or, again I've done that wrong and I? I shouldn't have shoved it, I didn't shove it right back anyhow. Let it dry first and we'll coat it with, uh, with brake fluid before we push it back. We'll give it a couple of minutes and then we'll come back. Hockey Corky YouTube. Plenty of uh, brake fluid on this piston. A good dousing. I'll move that over there. Lift them wires up. Give that wire a wipe. All's well. You just got a bit of brake fluid on the floor. Okay, once we've done that, uh, get your little tool in there, open him up. And that, uh, if you can see that, it'll shove that piston right back. Easy, easy, easy. Piston's right back now. Wind him out. Of course, if you want to make sure the piston's running really free, pump it out again. Coming out like a good one. Got a bit... Beware of that clip in the bottom there. Yeah, it's a lot easier now coming out, you can push it back easier. So that we know that piston's free. Again, what we do now, with the piston right back in position, brake fluid cleaner. You rate good dousing, clean everything out. Give that a good white round. Now unlike the front, the rear only go back one way. Get your pin. You can put a bit of grease on if you wish. There's still remnants on it from last time. Push your pins down, get your pads in. You'll come up against some resistance because there's a spring in there. 
but don't forget when everything's lined up with this one you've got to screw it the rest of the way it's not a push we'll nip that up when it's on the bike we can get some purchase on it sort your pads out The uh, I'm missing somewhere here. Aren't I? Your two pads will sit on two clips at the back. You've got to line them up before you drop the uh, or oh, the clips off. We've got some missing YouTube. The clips come out, out of the brake pads. Push the clips in push the clip in if yours drops out this is on a spring on a bit of a uh, not spring uh, piston so hold your brakes wide open and your brakes pads sit on these there's one either side see one either side and your back back of your brake pads sit on them so you've got to line them up as well, I forgot all about that. See that one swinging back? I've got bloody cramp. Jesus! Oh. Cramp! <laughs> get, yourself into, get yourself into a position you can deal with it. <laughs> you've got to sit back on them otherwise it'll just keep sliding down there that's the best way of doing it. if you sit your brakes your, 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 your full um, caliper back onto the back of the, onto those two pins it'll slide in once you get it into there you've got to push that rubber back so you can line that bolt all up we're almost there now we're almost there <coughs> Something stopping us, YouTube. You soon we have a problem. Ah, oh, that's what's stopping us. This back, this front one's dropped. Now the back one's dropped. Now the front one's dropped. Then they're both in. They're both in now, YouTube. I'll show you what I did. Put your bolts back in. Everything lined up. Take my gloves off now and get my hands on them. Okay, got everything lined up now. Just screwing everything back. Oh, 
baby's not going right, Martin. Oh, we're on his way now. We're on his way now, we're struggling a bit there. And if I'm looked at torques after to the correct torque setting. I just want to show you something before I do. Don't forget to nip that uh, pin in there. That's him. Now the bit I want to show you is the reversal, what I was telling you about. Get your copper grease and honestly fill that, fill it to the brim. Once it's filled to the brim, get your little grub screw it's a bit messy but you got to do that to keep it in good nick trust me trust me on this one once you've done that you can nip it up obviously the copper grease is going to slide out all over there you go then you wipe it off keeping all the grease away from the brake. If you don't do that, seriously, that pin will strip. Causing no end of trouble. All the grease is cleaned off. Once you've done that and nipped everything up to your correct torque settings, don't forget to pump your brake. Get the piston out. Nice and tight is that. Uh, I'll see you back in the house, YouTube, in a second. Adios for now. Hockey Corky YouTube, we're back in the house as you can see. Phasers front and back brakes uh, clean and put back together again. Everything torqued up as it should be. Everything pumped up, don't forget to pump your brakes up as you should do. I am no mechanic, by, uh, you know, I'm, I'm telling you now I am no mechanic. Follow my instructions at your own risk. Uh, but I've been doing it for years like that and I've never had a problem. I've rolled about five or six, I don't know, four or five, six thousand on that bike and I've done it twice every year since I've had it a few years now. And uh, I've had no problems with them brakes, doing, you know, following them in, following the way. Don't. Don't do what I did and undo the brake line. I've left that in. I know it's a cock up. I was working back to front and the other cock up I did. I smacked myself right in the face. I slipped off the uh, wrench and smacked my face into the bike. Purely because I was working up. Wrong road round. Anyhow, I hope you find that of some interest and. Uh, and uh, it's helped somebody along the way, I hope, fingers crossed. And I put it on because it's a miserable rainy day and I'm sick to death of the rain, 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 rain. I've had enough. My phone cocked up this week, so I've had to buy a new phone. It's not good. Uh, so anyhow, bye for now, YouTube. Adios, and I'll see you all on the next video when Morphe, once again, Rides again. Adios YouTube. Adios.